Welcome to Freeport McMoran's Miami, Arizona operations. Freeport McMoran supplies natural resources that connect and sustain the world's infrastructure. In Miami, Arizona, we primarily produce copper, a fundamental material used in numerous products relied upon by people everywhere, including those around the globe looking to improve their standard of living. Freeport McMoran's Miami operation includes an open pit copper mine, a solution extraction electrowinding plant for copper leaching, a smelter with a sulfuric acid plant, and a copper rod mill. We process ore to produce copper cathodes, smelt concentrated ore to produce copper anodes, and we convert cathodes into rod coils used by our customers to make many essential copper products. We produce about 60 million pounds of copper cathode per year. The smelter processes about 700,000 tons of copper concentrate per year from Freeport McMoran mining operations, producing about 400 million pounds of copper anode and 700,000 tons of sulfuric acid for copper leaching at our mines in Arizona, New Mexico, and Colorado. Freeport McMoran and our Miami operations are committed to responsible stewardship of the environment and its natural resources. We put the highest priority on ensuring compliance with all laws, rules, and regulations governing the environment, including the proper handling and disposal of any waste generated by our business activities. We adhere to established principles of sustainable development in all our business activities, and we hold all employees responsible for protecting and conserving our air, land, and water. Ecosystem restoration and land reclamation are integral to our work in Miami. Freeport McMoran has suspended operations at Miami's open pit copper mine. We continue producing copper through leaching mined ore already placed on stockpiles. The mine operation involved drilling, blasting, loading by shovel, and truck haulage of the material. The fleet consisted of an electric shovel and hydraulic loaders, 260-ton haul trucks, and support equipment. <laughs> The large electric-powered shovels are capable of scooping up 100 tons of ore in a single pass. The mammoth haul trucks can carry more than 300 tons of material per load, delivering ore to the leach stockpiles and waste to the overburdened stockpiles. In leaching, commonly referred to as solution extraction and electrowinning, we remove copper from rock using weak sulfuric acid solutions. This process makes use of sulfuric acid made on site as a byproduct of smelting. A slightly acidic solution called raffinate percolates through the stockpiles of mined ore, dissolving copper minerals contained in the rock surface. This copper-laden water, called pregnant leach solution, exits the bottom of the stockpile and flows into collection ponds. From there, we pump it to tanks at our solution extraction plant. We mix the pregnant leach solution with a diluting substance similar to kerosene that contains an organic compound specifically designed to extract the copper. The pregnant leach solution is the heavier of the two mixed solutions and settles to the bottom of the tank, becoming raffinate again where pumps send it back to the top of the stockpile to begin the cycle again. The diluting liquid containing the copper laden organic floats to the top of the tank and is pumped to the next section of the solution extraction plant.
In the final phase, we pump the rich electrolyte through a series of tanks or cells in the electro-winning tank house. Insoluble lead plates hang in the tanks alternating with sheets of thin copper made using electrolysis on titanium plates. Each lead plate serves as the anode pole of an electric circuit. The thin copper sheets, called starter sheets, serve as the cathode pole. A direct electric current passes from the anode through the electrolyte to the starter sheet, causing the copper ions in the electrolyte solution to attach onto the starter sheet. After 14 days in the tank house, we harvest 337 pound copper cathodes that are 99.999% pure and ready to be made into marketable copper rod or shipped directly to customers for other manufacturing purposes. The Miami Rod Mill treats cathodes from the Miami Electrowinning Tank House and our other North American copper mines. The plant's furnace melts cathodes and the molten copper flows into the holding vessel for temperature control. We separate any traces of impurities in a pour pot so only pure copper casts the bar. The copper cools in the casting wheel, solidifying into a bar which we mill into cylindrical rod with a series of rollers. We clean the rod, coat it with a thin layer of preserving wax, and coil it for transport and sale. The plant produces 7,500 pound and 15,000 pound copper rod coils, the primary feedstock for the wire and cable industry. The Miami Smelter is one of only three copper smelters in the United States and it has been operating since 1915. Smelting is the process of melting concentrated ore to separate its valuable metal from the other elements in the original rock. Because nature creates copper in low densities, typically less than 1% grade, copper levels in mined ore must be increased or concentrated for recovery at the smelter. In order to isolate the copper-containing minerals in the concentrated ore further, smelting uses extreme heat to remove nonmetal impurities, primarily naturally occurring iron and sulfur. The smelter receives concentrate via rail and truck. We blend the concentrates into a consistent feed for smelting. Conveyor belts feed the blended concentrate and added silica flux into the isosmelt vessel, a giant steel furnace in which temperatures well above 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit melt the concentrate to form a molten mixture we can readily remove. We tap the molten material from the iso furnace into an electric furnace to separate copper bearing mat which settles under the lighter waste called slag. We skim off the slag by tapping it through a hole at its level of the furnace, and we haul the slag to a dump where it remains inert. Using massive ladles moved by overhead cranes, we send the matte copper to converters for further processing. Converters remove iron and sulfur using high volume blast air and more added silica flux to separate the iron as slag. We mix mat from the electric furnace with silica flux and blow blast air into the molten mat to oxidize the iron sulfide, creating an iron silica based slag, which we transfer back to the electric furnace to recover additional copper. Blowing more blast air into the converters oxidizes most of the remaining sulfur to form impure blister copper. Ladles send the molten blister copper to anode furnaces to remove the last remaining sulfur and oxygen using more blast air along with natural gas and steam. During oxidation, air blown into the molten copper removes the remaining sulfur, driving it off as sulfur dioxide gas. In the reducing stage, we use a combination of natural gas and steam to lower the oxygen content of the molten copper to acceptable levels. Oxidizing and reducing in the anode barrels results in copper of 99.8% purity.
In the casting phase, we pour the molten copper into molds, arranged on a large rotating wheel. The copper cools and solidifies to form slabs called anodes. Weighing 855 pounds each, anodes are the smelter's final product. We apply strict quality standards and transport them by rail to our electrolytic refinery in El Paso, Texas. Refining the anodes produces copper cathodes of at least 99.9% .9 purity. The smelter captures sulfur dioxide gas created in the smelting process and conveys it through ductwork to the acid plant to produce sulfuric acid. The plant cleans the gas by filtering out all dust and moisture and reduces its temperature. The cleaned and cooled sulfur dioxide combines with excess oxygen to become sulfur trioxide gas, which we convert into sulfuric acid using water. The acid plant uses about 98% of all the sulfur naturally contained in the smelted concentrate to make about 690,000 tons of sulfuric acid each year for copper leaching at our North American mining operations. Since 2006, Freeport McMoran has been conducting advanced reclamation and ongoing remediation projects at the Miami Mine on a large scale, restoring thousands of acres of previously utilized footprint for post-mining use. Our life cycle team, consisting of variously disciplined engineering specialists, has developed and completed successful reclamation projects we use as models for other mines, setting benchmarkings for more robust future reclamation at Miami and producing significant learning for reclamation design at other mining properties. One such project includes using more than 20 million cubic yards of clean overburdened material from the mine to reshape and revegetate nearly 900 acres for post-mine use. The Webster Lake project significantly reduces the amount of mine impacted water. The soil cover will also allow establishment of native grasses and desert shrubs necessary for a stable ecosystem capable of supporting wildlife. The benefit coincides with the restoration of the stream system capable of conveying a 26 square mile drainage basins, unimpacted stormwater runoff from the reclamation areas to the land beyond the mine site. The designs use shallower slope angles and water control devices to manage storm water runoff. The result is remediation of the bloody tanks and Pinal Creek stream channels. This natural drainage has not been free draining since the 1930s, making it a significant step for Miami reclamation and one of Freeport McMoran's largest reclamation projects. The Webster Lake project further complements previous work accomplished to reverse historic mining impacts in the district. The Pinal Creek project has successfully removed 96 million pounds of metals from 13 miles of the shallow alluvial aquifer since the early 1980s and it has actively addressed impacts incurred from mining activities at the start of the 20th century. The Pinal Creek project has protected downstream surface water uses and created nearly 850 acres of healthy and diverse riparian system. The processes employed are traditional pump and treat systems utilizing well fields, physical and hydraulic barriers to ensure capture, along with collection and extraction of any constituents of concern. The treatment ensures that we achieve our remedial objectives and obtain long-term groundwater restoration. Miami Operations provides an average of about 800 to 1,000 jobs, employing people of diverse backgrounds. Our team is comprised of degree professionals and highly skilled craftsmen, working in a vast array of career fields. 
The Freeport McMoran Foundation and the Freeport McMoran Operations are committed to investing in Arizona communities. We work in partnership to help residents build their own sustainable futures. Freeport McMoran's roots run deep, as does the company's commitment to creating a culture of corporate citizenship throughout its global operations. We have characterized our efforts in community engagements as transforming tomorrow together. In order to transform tomorrow, we focus on comprehensive, sustainable social development, including robust engagement, sharing enterprise, social investing, volunteerism, and creating opportunities through our business. For example, in partnership with the San Carlos Apache Tribe, the company operates a technical training program to teach and certify tribal members in heavy equipment operations and industrial maintenance. The courses provide life-changing technical skills and employability for Apache students. Hundreds of students have graduated and most have been hired or are in the process of being hired by the company. Local hiring is one of many ways we fulfill our commitment to supporting economic development. We invite you to visit our website, freeportinmycommunity.com, which is a comprehensive resource for all who are interested in our community sustainability and engagement efforts. The website lists our various social investment programs and opportunities, describes the projects and partnerships we support, and has specific sections for stakeholders such as schools, nonprofits, employees, and other groups. Here you'll find detailed information on initiatives such as women's development, Native American programs, STEM innovation grants, mini grants for education, student scholarships, community investment funds, community partnership panels, our United Way campaign, employee matching gifts program, employee volunteer fund, and the High Grade Helpers employee volunteer program. We're proud to help the communities where we have a presence and to contribute to their enduring success. Safety is our top priority at Freeport McMoran. Mandatory safety training is a perpetual process for all employees and Miami Operations has a staff of full-time professionals dedicated solely to safety, working around the clock to make sure everyone goes home free of injury and illness. The Miami team takes our commitment to safety far beyond compliance with all laws and regulations. We require additional comprehensive audits to assure our safety management system is as effective as possible. Weaknesses are identified and resources are applied to achieve the company's industry-leading safety goals. Our total dedication to safety goes beyond the workplace to community wellness and healthcare, which are critical elements of any safe and sustainable community.